Uh, welcome to another edition of In the Cut with Alfred Lyon. I'm not in the shop today because it was really loud out there and uh, one of the complaints I got last time was uh, not being able to be heard. Uh, I'm looking into microphones and whatnot, uh, so if anybody has any idea of what I can do just with, a, with an iPhone as opposed to wearing something, you know, I'd appreciate that. Um, so we're still talking about cutter geometry and uh, this, uh, this time I'd like to talk about uh, rake, whether it's a radial rake or axial rake and the difference of those two things and I'll show some examples of that as well. Uh, but first uh, I'm going to go through some thoughts uh, that I have on this particular part of cutter geometry. Uh, I'm going to be referring to some notes on occasion so you'll see me looking down unfortunately I don't have the greatest memory anymore. Um, so uh, you know it's going to differ from tool grinder to tool grinder. Uh, you know. It, it should all be set in stone and if you refer to the machinery handbook you'll see there is a lot that that is given there um, but in today's competitive industry uh, we we all like to change it up a little bit you know so because if everybody made everything exactly the same then you'd only have price and delivery so you you know you, you need more reasons to to go to another company to buy cutting tools um, uh, the reason I choose certain geometries, whether it's a um, straight flutes, helix, uh, axial rake, uh, or whatnot, um, has a lot to do with the uh, machines and pro processes at my disposal, as well as my own skill uh, and ability to train others to grind. Um, some things just aren't, it's not reasonable for us to do it a certain way. Um, before we got the Anka grinders in 2012, it wasn't reasonable for us to do helical tools. Uh, you know, you can make them manually, but it's just not, you don't make any money at that. So, you know, that's the bottom line there. Um, typically, you know, wider cutting tools are going to always outperform if they have a, a high helix or something like that on there, depending on material. Um, let's see. Uh, also, the reason that I choose certain styles is is because I feel like with my experience as a machinist and a tool grinder uh, what what I think would would work better and what I would use if I was grinding so so that that's some of the choice uh, sometimes you know a customer will send actual uh, they want this kind of uh, shear they want this helix they want this this uh, radial center line you know and that's fine I don't mind doing that so but but a lot of times it's just a 2d drawing that I get and I just kind of generate everything from that um, so let's see, uh, first thought, the type of milling uh, really dictates the cutter needed. Uh, and uh, let's see, there's a few factors that, that so let's, let's see, uh, what kind of cut is gonna be done? Roughing, finishing, or both? Um, what's the material that you're cutting, you know? Uh, what about the number of parts that you're making? You know, how long does this cutter need to last? Uh, and also, uh, what type of machine are you using? and uh, what's your work holding setup like. You know, all of those things are gonna dictate, you know, what is actually gonna make the cutter perform. You know, uh, is it overkill to put a helix on a cutter uh, if, if you're running it on a machine with almost no horsepower and uh, you're gonna use it one time, you know, so it's gonna cost more, so why do it? Uh, so there's all that kind of stuff. Um, also, uh, you know the difference between radial rake and axial rake you know so I'll go over that in a minute with better descriptions um, basically uh, radial rake is gonna uh, help you with certain different types of material uh, you're gonna want you want to have more rake if it's softer less rake if it's harder material um, let's see what else. Uh, thin cutters uh, generally aren't going to require uh, a whole bunch of axial rake. Sometimes most you know, it's going to perform just as well uh, with uh, with zero axial rake. And I'm talking like either thin key seats like under fifty, sixty thousandths, uh, or or even very short uh, form tools that the length of cut is under a hundred thousandths. You know, it doesn't really pick you. You don't really gain anything by putting a helix or a shear on there. Um, okay, so those are the first thoughts. It's going to be long, um, hopefully not too long. And, uh, and now I'm going to kind of show you some examples of that. 
Okay, so what we have here is uh, basically the software for tool room uh, for the anchor grinders, but they kind of will, will show you some of the examples of uh, rake. So first of all, let's see, um, if we take a look at what they call insert width. So insert width basically is our radial rake. So depending on the cutter, uh, you can see it says this would be positive. It's actually negative rake even though the dimension is in there. So if it's above center or ahead of center, what they, what they like to call it, so this is the tooth base over here. So that would be considered uh, um, negative rake or above center line. And really wouldn't cut too great unless you're cutting something super hard or uh, possibly if you are um, plunging in material. And even then you'd need it to to be not too far above. So this, this is just kind of a help drawing to, to over exemplify uh, exactly where we're going. So in other words, you know, generally I'd put a negative number in here. So that, and, and again, so, so if it's below center line like most cutters um, that we make, it's gonna, it's gonna perform well in a, a variety of different materials. And generally, instead of saying, oh, it's uh, 50 thousandths below or 10 thousandths below center line, you would call out a, a kind of um, a, a radial rake. So in other words, if say you got 10 degrees radial rake, what you would do is you take half the diameter of the cutter and you would multiply that by the tangent of 10. And that would give you the exact amount of thousandths below center line for a given diameter to establish 10 degrees radial rake. So, so the line would actually go kind of like that. So your, your, your tip here at the cutting edge would be at the center line of the cutter, but the flute face would be at an angle. Uh, hard to describe right here. Uh, maybe if I'm looking at a tool, I'll try to do that in a second. Okay, so next, uh, that's, that's radial rake. Uh, we want to look at our uh, axial rake. So if we look at axial rake, so right here what you see is the, the red orangish line here is actually the cutter face. And so what we used to call axial rake is also called shear. And shear can be anywhere from zero. It can be it can be positive, uh, where where it's actually going left hand in a way, uh, or it can be going like right hand, like this the way this drawing is showing. So, uh, and shear can can uh, even kind of mimic a helix, uh, which which helps if you have a really uh, intricate form tool, and a helix would get distorted. So you can use uh, that kind of thing. And generally, typically, you want it, you want it to be zero degrees radial rake at the at the end, uh, and that allows for it to fall off down near at the shank. Uh, and that you know, as the say say that it's a taper end mill or something like that, or or uh, where this end diameter is smaller than the large diameter. Uh, as you get closer to to zero on a diameter. Uh, say like a ball nose or something like that, you want it to be closer to center line radially. Uh, that's just the way it is. But if it's bigger, then it can be below center line, as long as all the cutting geometry is correct. So then next we go to a lead. Now a lead is the same basic idea as a helix, but it's the way we program a helix. Um, obviously this software could generate, uh, you know, I could say 30 degree helix, but I could also say, 2.72 lead uh, if it's say it's a half inch diameter. The lead will change uh, with different helix depending on the diameter of the tool or the diameter that the helix is taken from. Um, uh, so, so any, you know, basically any lead uh, can, can translate to a helix. It's a very simple mathematical problem. I mean, you know, you take the, uh, the diameter times pi divide that by the tangent of the helix you want, the helix angle you want, and that gives you your lead. Uh, so, you know, just like everything else, there's a simple, uh, uh, what do you call those things? You know, theorem or whatever, I don't know. And uh, so anyway, so then uh, other times, you know, for different things, you're gonna have like end rake and this and that, but mostly what the two things I'm talking about today is the rake for radial and the rake for shear. So that's pretty much it. Now I'll show you the tooling that I was gonna show you. Okay, so first up here is a standard straight fluted solid key seat, okay? And uh, so, you know, it's fairly thin and it wouldn't really benefit, benefit from having uh, 
uh, Helix or Axial or any of that stuff. May, it might benefit from having uh, staggered flutes um, because you know staggering is going to relieve uh, pressure. It's going like, to make it vibrate less. It's going to make it, the chips are going to cut differently, so that so the chips are smaller. Uh, so it's it's typically a, a better, freer cut. So even even though it's thin, staggering might help. But but Helix probably wouldn't help too much. Uh, and you could see the radial, if you can see down the pipe there, is just below center line. It's probably about five degrees radial. And so you know if you if you hold it like that, you can kind of see that it's straight across. And then if you tilt it, you can see that there's a, there should be a line that goes from this over to here through the middle of the tool that you would have to tilt up to get that to happen. All right. So then the next up in line is a, like a stagger tooth cutter. Okay. So a stagger tooth cutter is one where you have a left hand and right hand axial rake. So that allows for the chips to cut kind of in different directions. You know, it wants to eject in different directions. So the chips are, are formed differently. Um, you got a lot of flutes, so it's probably a harder material. Uh, typically, uh, you want, according to the machinery handbook, you always want two flutes at least in the cut. So, uh, you know, if you have a lower surface speed, then you need more teeth. So if you're cutting something hard, you need more teeth, so you always have two teeth in the cut. If you have a higher surface speed, you can have less teeth because you're cutting so fast that you're always going to have two in there because they get around faster. So that's staggered. Uh, and then we got, uh, let's see, this is a cutter that the form tool, the form was such on it that, and the, di the, the diameters were so different that I couldn't put typical helix on there, but because it's so wide, I mean, that's a wide cut, length of cut, maybe like a three quarters of an inch or something like that. Um, I wanted to put tons of shear on there to kind of mimic a helix. Okay, but because I, I did it straight fluted but with axial shear or axial rake only, that allows for it to uh, gradually enter the part as opposed to slamming into it like a paddle. And so this would cut much better than, than it would if it was straight. And if I put a helix on there, the hook that would be formed would, allow, would cause a lot of distortion of the form itself on the part. All right. So then here we got a tool with it's got a lot of, it's, it's actually only about 15 degree uh, helix because it's cutting something soft, but you can see because of the length of cut, and this is a form tool, this isn't actually uh, just an end mill, it has a big old radius on it, like you know, 15 inch radius or something like that. And so, uh, you know, it's a good candidate for helix because, you know, he helical cut allows for super gradual entrance into the cut and you know, by the time it gets to here, this flute's already in the cut also. So there's a lot of stability, a lot less uh, vibration, and vibration, of course, causes chatter. So much better. And then we still have our radial rake. Okay, this is a center cutting similar to most end mills, but you still have your radial rake. So you can still see at here, this one's right at center, and, um, and the hook kind of plays into that. And the gash on the flute allows for that to continue all the way down to the end. And then lastly, we have a tool that's a form tool uh, with that I went ahead and put shear on, even though it's not all that wide, but it has a lot of en uh, engagement. You can see that, you know, they're wanting to cut the, their form all the way in. That's a deep radial engagement. So I wanted to make sure that they, it was free cutting. So by, by giving it that shear axially, it allows for a, a good free cut. And again, there we go with some uh, right at center because of the shear. So that's about it. Uh, there's so much more on, on uh, geometry to talk about, but uh, I think this video is long enough for this week. All right, if you have any more to add or more questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you.